find the volume of the described solid S. Now the base of S is the region enclosed by the parabola y equals 1 minus x squared. So you can see here that here's the parabola 1 minus x squared and the x-axis, which is the same thing as the horizontal line y equals 0. Now the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis are squares. So the cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis are squares. So let's take a look at the three-dimensional look of this graph. So here is, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. And the axis that goes right through here is the z-axis, which is, creates that three-dimensional space. So what we want to do is we want to take a cross-section of this graph. And there we have our square. Now keep in mind here that we're taking multiple cross-sections of these squares. Okay, so with that you can see that we have our square, which is the area of a square, which is side times side. Okay, now I want you to take a look at the base here. So the base, there are two bases. So down here you will see that there are two. So if you look at the center here, let's denote that So, excuse me, we have times 2. And so the reason why is the following. So let's just take a look at first this function. So we have the function y equals 1 minus x squared. <coughs> and so you notice here is that we're taking the cross section according to the y axis. So this cross section of this square is in this direction and so that's why we're revolving it around the y-axis and if that is the case then we need to solve for y or excuse me solve for x in this first equation so we have x squared minus or negative x squared plus 1 equals y we subtract 1 to both sides, we get negative x squared equals y minus 1. And then divide both sides by negative, so now we have x squared, which is going to equal negative y plus 1. And so then if we take the square root of both sides, we get x, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus y. Now I want you to notice here that we have this positive value, so we have plus or minus, right? So we're only going to focus on this side here since that is the positive part of it. The other side would then represent the negative portion of that. So now we know that x is going to equal the square root of 1 minus y. So now we know what that represents. Okay, so what that does is that tells us that right here, that's the x, and that x is going to equal the square root of 1 minus y. But as I told you, there are two of them, right? So there's two of them. So that's going to represent 2. So that means each side is going to be 2. So this entire side here is going to be 2 times 1 minus y and the base is also now going to be 2 times the square root of 1 minus y. And So now what do we know about the area of that square? Well we know that the area of the square in terms of y is going to be s squared. right? And so we know that now that the base is 2 or the sides are all 2 times the square root of 1 minus y so therefore this is now going to become 2 times the square root of 1 minus y squared so therefore we end up getting 4 because 2 squared is 4 
times parentheses 1 minus y. So therefore, there is the function that we're going to integrate according to y. So now we need to find our volume. So our volume is going to equal the following. Well, we need to figure out what are the y values that we need to use. So over here, you can see that this represents the origin of 0, 0. And then this value here is on our graph. If you take a look over here, it's probably easier on this graph. This is 0, 0. So we have our upper bound of 1 and our lower bound of 0. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a lower bound of 0, our upper bound of 1. And then we have a of y dy. And what do we know about a of y? Well, we know that it's 4 times 1 minus y. So we're going to go from 0 to 1. We're going to factor out the 4. And then we have 1 minus y dy. And so the next step is to find the antiderivative. So we have 4 times the antiderivative of 1 is going to be y, and then the antiderivative of y is going to be 1 over 2y squared. And then we're going to evaluate it from 0 to 1. And so therefore we have 4 times we have 1 minus 1 half times 1 squared minus 0 minus 1 half times 0 squared. And we know that this piece is going to give us 0. So over here we're going to have 4 times, well that's going to be 1 which is the same, <coughs> excuse me, the same thing as 2 over 2 minus 1 half times 1 which is 1 over 2. And so therefore this is going to be 4 times 1 half which is equal to 2. So therefore, the volume is equal to 2.